you give me permission to speak for five minutes? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God. In 1987, I arrived on June 1st of that year in Kinloch, Missouri, where I did my deaconess internship as a theology student at Valparaiso University. On June 1st, 1988, I arrived in Milwaukee, where I began to serve at Cross Lutheran Church in another internship. June 1st of 1987 in Kinloch, and June 1st of 1988 in Milwaukee looked no different. The cities were not different. The African American community in Kinloch was being dismantled by an airport that was being built. And the African American community in Milwaukee was being dismantled by white people who were coming back into the city. Years later, as I have had children and a husband and have watched Milwaukee, Milwaukee and Ferguson and Milwaukee and Kinloch are no different. We want to believe that we have come far. We want to believe that all of that work that our ancestors did has meant something for each and every one of our children. But the reality is, Kinloch and Ferguson and Milwaukee are no different. And so it was really hard for me to come in here and to see this, because I see this every single day on my journey in my city. I see this every single day, and I have children who have to walk in this city with beautiful brown complex skin. Whether it is my daughter Sojourner, whether it is my son DJ who was up there somewhere, whether it is your children of brown and black skin, this is not something that we want to see in our neighborhood. And so sometimes, sometimes when I am by myself and I drive past some of these, sometimes when I am by myself, and the night before, I have seen the visual of whose child it was who was killed in some way, whose life was lost, whose hope was diminished in some ways. Sometimes when I am by myself, whew, I get out of my car and I light a candle. I get out of my car because the flame is no longer there, because the group is no longer there, because the television cameras are gone, but that life is still lost. So sometimes when I am by myself, I get out of my car and I bend down <coughs> and I light a candle. I light a candle because some child's life has been lost, but I will confess to you I light a candle, and after I pray for that family, after I pray for what has happened, after I pray for how we have failed, how we have failed, how our systems have failed in this city, after I pray for all of that, and I light that candle, I pray that I will never have to light a candle for her. DJ, where are you? DJ, stand. And I pray that I will never have to light a candle for him. You and I are bridges. We are bridges of hope and truth and responsibility. And it is our responsibility to make sure that very few candles are lit. Very few memorials arrive in our city. So the only question for us tonight is will you be the bridge that you need to be? Will you be the bridge of healing and hope and truth and anger? Anger has its place in this city. And will you just continue to drive by? Or will you, will you ever stop to light a candle? Mm -hmm.